Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today's video is gonna be answering a question that I get asked all the time. A lot of people see me adventuring here on the channel in my Tacoma, this guy right here. More recently, I've picked up this Land Cruiser. These represent, in essence, two different vehicle platforms, a truck and an SUV. So a lot of people getting into adventure and getting into overlanding or vehicle camping or whatever, they see me doing something in a certain vehicle and think, I need that vehicle to do what he does, but you really don't. Um, so I'd say before going out and spending thousands of dollars on a new vehicle, depending on what you drive, you can probably at least get your feet wet with whatever you're driving. So I'm not at all trying to encourage anybody to go out and buy new vehicles. Use what you can wisely don't you know go try and go crazy wheeling in your in your honda civic or anything like that but you can kind of get your feet wet and do trails that are appropriate or dirt roads or you know just go to a camping site and see how you like it but if it's already something that you like or if it's something that you really want to invest in to just kind of do more of a lot of times for me i'll buy something nice in a hobby or an area of interest that I want to become proficient in or spend more time doing. Uh, and a lot of people do this. They, they wanna get into guitar, so they buy a nice guitar, so then they kind of feel like they need to play that guitar or something. I'm the same way. So if, if that's kind of how you are and you're like, well, I just wanna buy this thing and then I'll get into it, that's cool too. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but what we're gonna talk about, and this video is just, just talking, really just rambling, I don't even have bullet points, is the difference between a truck and an SUV. Uh, and this is like a lot of my videos, just so I can point people to this video when they ask, hey Mike, should I get a truck or should I get an SUV? So a truck, I'm a truck guy, but I'm also an SUV guy. If you look over the course of the history of all of my vehicles, of which I've had like 30 now at this point in my life, it goes like truck, sports car, SUV, sports car, truck, truck, SUV, truck, SUV, sports car, truck. Anyway, so typically I, I bounce back and forth between the platforms. So I have a lot of experience in both trucks and SUVs. Currently both have a truck and an SUV. So I don't know exactly how I wanna break this down, but a truck, basically the difference between a truck and an SUV is that the truck, you have a bed of the truck that is separate from the cab of the truck. An SUV, it's all one big thing like a van or, or a hatchback or a, a station wagon. Some people call SUVs wagons uh, as well. So truck, you have that separation. Also with a truck, typically you have more room for stuff, more room to put gear, which makes them really great if you wanna do truck stuff, pick up firewood, pick up building materials, pick up that couch off of Craigslist, help a friend move. Trucks have a bunch of benefits that an SUV will never have. Whether you need those things or not is, is a different story. I do a lot of truck stuff, so I like having a truck. The other benefit of a truck is you get to build it out kind of in more ways than you can an SUV. An SUV, you're basically relegated to either removing a seat or putting some drawers inside, but everything else you do is on the outside. With a truck, you have this whole truck bed. So if you're like, I don't really need to haul around stuff in the bed of my truck, I'm just gonna put a bed rack and a rooftop tent and do that, you can do it. Or you say, hey, I wanna put a tall bed rack so then I can put a bigger tent on top of it, you know, like a tent that you might put on an SUV. You can do that on a truck as well. You also have the advantage of doing like I do, which is like something like a diamond back cover, which I love with a roof rack on top of it. So then you can put your rooftop tent on there and then you can have an enclosed big old area in the bed to store all your stuff that's locked up and out of the weather. That's a setup that I really, really like. Another setup that I also like but don't have because I don't think I like it more, but maybe I will at some point, I don't know, is like a camper setup. So you can do either a truck topper, just like a camper shell, and then do whatever you want inside. I don't think those are that advantageous for a short bed, like a five foot bed, because unless you're pretty short, you can't really sleep inside of the camper unless you do quite a few modifications. But if you get a bigger truck with a longer bed, uh, like you can even get a Tacoma with a longer bed, then you can sleep inside. And then a 
truck cap or topper makes more sense. In addition to that though, you can go a little more and get a camper shell or a, a camper, a slide-in camper, like a four-wheel camper or a GFC or something like that, where you kind of turn the back of your bed into a camper. And that kind of opens up a whole host of new, fun, cool opportunities. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with a truck. Uh, I would say a truck is more flexible and you can kind of evolve your build to different things. And if you just want to take everything out, then you have a truck bed back there that you can use to, to haul and do normal truck stuff. And another advantage that I like about the truck is, especially with a Diamondback cover, you can just throw stuff in the back and you don't really need to secure it. It's not gonna bounce out or fly out if you stop too fast or get in an accident, something's not gonna fly through and kill you. I mean, unless you're carrying around something, something crazy back there. But that's a real risk in an SUV. If you're smart in an SUV and you have a fridge or a cooler or batteries or a bin or anything really, you want to strap it down securely. And I'm not talking just with like a little bungee that kind of keeps it from bouncing around. If you get into a high speed crash in an SUV and you have a bunch of heavy stuff in your car, that's very, very dangerous. So when putting stuff in the back of an SUV, more care has to be put on securing it down than in the back of a truck for the most part. Having said that, if you just have an open bed in the back of your truck and you're bouncing around pretty extreme, then you do need to secure the stuff in the bed of a truck as well. So, so I really like trucks. I think they're very utilitarian, which is funny because SUV is a sports utility vehicle. I think a truck has more utility. But the drawbacks of a truck for a lot of people are, well, I have two kids and a dog and we don't really have room and we really need you know, to, to put the dog and the kids all inside of the vehicle. You could put your dog in the back or something like that, but maybe you want them all in the same, under the same roof, so to speak. So that's where a sport utility vehicle shines. Also, some sport utility vehicles are bigger. They have seating for seven or something like that. So some people say, I need that extra seating because I have a big family or I, I take a lot of people in my vehicle pretty often. So a truck just actually won't cut it for me because it doesn't have enough seating. And sometimes people choose to sleep inside of their SUV. Like in my Land Cruiser, I made a little sleeping platform in there. So I too can sleep inside of my vehicle. Now you're kind of like, well, you got a rooftop tent on there. Why would you ever want to sleep inside of your vehicle? Good question. But like people in the van life world know if the weather is really bad, it's pretty nice not having to go out of your vehicle and climb up a ladder and get into your tent. You just hang out in the vehicle. So a bigger SUV is obviously more beneficial if you want to hang out in the vehicle, but hanging out in the vehicle, you can't really do as easily in a truck unless again, you have a camper then the whole camper area of the truck kind of becomes your hangout. So again, you get a lot of use cases out of a truck depending on how you build it. But an SUV, it's very easy to have your SUV. Don't even buy a rooftop tent. Don't have to buy a camper. You don't even need to buy a ground tent. You can just essentially grab a sleeping bag depending on how the seats fold in the back. You can just sleep right in there. So. That's an advantage. Then there's modern availability of SUVs. Uh, SUVs, there's, there's a lot of SUVs out there, but not a lot that are more rugged built. And I'm not gonna dive too deep into body on frame and all that kind of stuff versus unibody. But for current generation vehicles, for the most part, you're gonna get a more rugged vehicle out of a truck. It's gonna be able to handle off-road abuse better than some of your more soccer mom sport utility vehicles. Having said that, there are some like a Jeep Wrangler, like a Wrangler Unlimited. That's obviously a pretty ruggedly built SUV. Or a Toyota 4Runner, that's pretty good. Or a Toyota Land Cruiser, that's pretty good. There's some Lexus options, maybe a Jeep Grand Cherokee. There's a handful of them out there. But for the most part, there's not that many that are like rugged platforms. 
But that's kind of changing and that's kind of evolving. Uh, I think with the success of the Forerunner and it not having a lot of competition in the market for the last few years, some other vehicles are coming to market soon, like the new Land Rover Defender. Seems like it's got some pretty cool features. The Ford Bronco, we don't know much about it, but I'm personally excited about that vehicle. So there's gonna be more options in the market that can kind of handle the rugged abuse that you know an overlander will put on him. I don't know if that was helpful or not. Hopefully it was. I'll annotate some stuff in the video description down below if I think of kind of more pros and cons. This is a great opportunity for you as a viewer to comment down below with some pros and cons or maybe even why you chose an SUV versus maybe why you chose a truck or why it makes more sense for your life because I think a lot of these stories, these individual personal stories will resonate with other people that are watching the video because I'm just one person and it's just my take on trucks versus SUVs. Uh, as with a a lot of things in life, people choose things for very specific reasons that I might not be privy to. Now for either platform, what you're going to want to look for, a lot of, a lot of people ask me, is for, do I really need four wheel drive to, to do what you do? And the answer to that varies. On a lot of trails, I do, I definitely need four wheel drive. I do. But for a lot of stuff I do, I could also get there in a minivan. So not saying everything I do, you need four wheel drive. So if you don't have four wheel drive, I would again say, get out there. Something like Max Trax or some type of traction device will come in hugely beneficial if you only have two wheel drives and if you have four wheel drive as well. But if you only have a two wheel drive, Go for it, have some fun. If you're shopping for a new vehicle, I would definitely say to pick up a four wheel drive vehicle. Now four wheel drive is different than all wheel drive. Most trucks that are four wheel drive will have true four wheel drive. That means it's gonna be better off-road performance. A lot of SUVs don't have true four wheel drive. Many of them do, but some of them just have all wheel drive. Now an all wheel drive system, again, without getting too deep, will not have as good off-road performance as a true four-wheel drive. So that's another difference and something you wanna look for when you're uh, buying these future vehicles. And another thing is just day-to-day -day use. What's better, a truck or an SUV? Probably an SUV is gonna be a little bit easier to park, probably will fit in more garages because it has a shorter wheelbase uh, and it's not as long, obviously. Uh, shorter wheelbase versus longer wheelbase. There's some differences there for off-roading, but again, there's not a right answer. Like a shorter wheel, wheelbase is sometimes better, but a longer wheelbase is, is sometimes better as well. I think that's all, and sorry again, this was a random video, but it was, I've been getting this question asked like more and more and more and more and more, especially now that I have the Tacoma and the Land Cruiser. And a lot of people are asking me for a comparison video between the two. I may do that, but it's, you know, this is a 2016, this is a 97. So the differences between these two ve vehicles is, is more than just like truck versus SUV. If you wanna see me do a video of the Tacoma versus the Land Cruiser, let me know down below. Let me know of the upcoming vehicles that you're excited for because there's a lot of cool things coming up in both the truck world as well as the SUV world, as well as the electric vehicle world. So I'm really excited about a lot of stuff coming up and I'll probably try to do a bunch of videos on a bunch of this stuff. But as always, I'd love to hear some of your questions. Uh, if you have specific truck versus SUV questions, now is also a good time to ask them down below. Okay, sorry for the boring video. I've been traveling a lot. I haven't had a chance to go out camping and do fun stuff like that uh, in a few weeks now. But this trip I'm leaving on tomorrow is my last like non-camping vehicle related trip that I'll be going on in a while. I will put a video out on the trip I'm doing tomorrow and that'll be kind of fun. And it is kind of off-road vehicle related too. So get subscribed, hit that thumbs up button, comment down below. So much stuff coming this year. The first month of the year has just been crazy busy for me. But after this, I'm intentionally carving out so much time for adventure uh, that there's gonna be a lot of fun, in my opinion, more fun stuff coming up. All right guys, until next time. Take care.